I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas. I personally doing pretty well, and I thought I would give you a little bit of a Christmas present, and that's to go over a little bit of EV stuff and the new automation exporter, and also how to do the full proper exporting two versions of a car with inside of the one mod. Also, with timestamps, and then you can just jump to that if you ever forget that and want to look that up. Don't jump now, because I, I need watch time. And for this, I wanted to do a kit car. And one of my favorite versions of a kit car is the K1, but I haven't gotten around to making a model of that yet. So instead, I wrapped the body of the old Mercedes W196 or whatever it was around an existing kit car that is actually really cheap and easy to come by. And that is this, the Lotus 7 kit car. Now, because many of the kit cars started to really gain popularity here in Australia in the mid nineties, I thought, you know what? We'll make it a 1995 and we have one without a roll bar and one with a roll bar, but I'm gonna go with roll bar. You know, it doesn't actually look really particularly say worse now that it's in two door fashion instead of single seater. So, I mean, I like it. There was the full body version, which would probably look a little bit easier to turn into a full two seater. But you know, I always thought that the open wheeler was cooler. So, I mean, we'll have to put fender flares on it, but I still like it. And to keep this thing very much like a kit car, I am gonna be using space frame and double wishbone cheap suspension. Probably something out of like a Mazda MX-5 sort of thing. As for the engine, it doesn't really particularly matter, mostly just the weight. And there's a few little caveats to that. Really, as a general rule, when you're looking at EV power graphs, the power will start very high and then go to a certain RPM, which here it should be somewhere near to where it is actually here. And then the torque will start to ramp down to the maximum RPM. So we've gone to 12,000 RPM. That'll set the limit for the exported EV engine or motor, sorry. But the reason why usually a power graph won't start at like max power is because there's a lot more to it than just the sterilized bench mathematics version of an electric motor. For one, drawing lots of energy from a battery from nothing to full immediately is a big problem and is why when it comes to like the Tesla, they have to preheat the batteries and all that sort of stuff, but even they won't be able to get it perfect. So usually when looking at a power graph for something like a Tesla, for instance, you'll see that it doesn't start immediately off. And then when it gets to here, it does start to taper down a little bit. Now, when it exports to BMNG, from automation, it'll have a flat line and then at the certain RPM where it starts to cut off, which is kind of arbitrary, does taper down in the way that it does. But it, it, you get the idea. Anyway, we want to have this torque number. It's not a one-to-one -one when it exports, but we want this number to be as high as possible. You gotta do a little bit of finagling and tuning. Basically what we've got here now is a fairly early peak in about a thousand Newton meters, which is a good number. And if we have a look at the Tesla, it's written in like weird funny number, sort of Garbo language. It's somewhere around 1400 and this is a much much more capable engine. So the fact that I'm getting anywhere near, I could just say that I've maybe Tesla swapped it. I think that's a good uh, sort of thing here. And you'll also see that it comes on fairly early and then it drops off at about 12,000 RPM, which kinda is reminiscent of this, which is what I'm going for. Now, time to paint this. I'm thinking we're gonna go the cliche, but the green. I just, I just I like green, it's a good color. But we also do have two-tone, so I could do something there. I'm thinking like a, Dark brown, maybe? Nah, that looks terrible. Hmm. None of these look any good. Eh, they'll just mono green then. Let's also turn off the visibility of the chassis since we don't want that. This is also gonna be rear wheel drive. It's gonna have like the battery and all that sort of stuff, mostly up there, a little bit of stuff in the back, but that's pretty much where everything's gonna be. I also think that the offset of the body is a little bit wrong, so I might have to fiddle with some wheelbase things. Now, for transmission, I go manual two-speed, and we'll go over that in a second. As for tires, we're gonna go a sports compound, some very uh, generic sort of vented disc one piston, which is the sort of thing that you find on a lot of different cars. Sports seat, and since this is like an early 2000s sort of thing, we'll go with something like a CD player. No power steering, because hell no, ABS, obviously. Safety, you know, not my biggest concern for a kit car. And a race preset. Now, coming back to gearing, this thing will really only run off of this gear here. So this will be the closest to make it easy to understand. And this is very important. I turn this down so then it's 
almost the same sort of thing, uh, and you can get a good sense of what the 0 to 100 will actually end up being. At 3.6 seconds, that is really fast. For back in the day, this is probably faster than a lot of Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff like that. This is also quite heavy, which is pretty accurate because the chassis would be very light, the body panel's very light, but the vehicle itself is gonna be really heavy with batteries. You know what, actually, hold on, you, did I? Oh, I forgot to make a fiberglass, so we'll make it a little bit lighter. And the thing won't, just won't have a very large range. It reckons the top speed will be 471. I'm gonna say no to that. So we're gonna go to aerodynamics. We're gonna give ourselves a lot of brake cooling because I mean, honestly, it's gonna have a lot of brake cooling and it also does induce its own drag and the quality will drop that way down. And our top speed now estimated reckon will be somewhere, still 403, so a lot, but you know. I'm also gonna drop this down to maybe 200-ish which will be a more realistic number for a vehicle like this. And now I'm seeing a lot of oversteer. So, time to rice this bitch up. Single flat element seems about right. It's gonna get hurt a little bit by this roll bar, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. And our oversteer now looks like, there we go, much better. And our top speed has also come down a little bit, which is also quite good, as long as the thing doesn't bounce off the rev limiter, which won't really happen the way in which power curves go in Beam NG. I suppose, let's just get around to designing this. I think if I make the chassis narrower, we won't be able to see this, so we won't have to do that hiding the suspension garb. There we go. Though, we are about to drop the body a lot. Mmm, still not enough. So in here, we'll drop it down even more. Yep, all right, suspension is visible again. Now, time for shoe shopping. What sort of wheels should I have? This is early 2000s. That does kind of fit the vibe. So yeah, I think, maybe? This is totally a vehicle that I would have owned. Oh God, this is awesome. Hmm, seems I have a bit of a UV unwrap issue. Oh dear. Luckily, we have Patchwork to the rescue. Now, for headlights, we could do the Lotus sort of outer headlight sort of things, much like I have here. I don't know, man. Hmm, not doing it for me. Let's at least try to fit headlights on here. Oh, God. Oh, it looks so bad. Oh, what have I... This is a bad idea. But you know, actually not... Yeah... It's almost... Oh, that's right. Because this has to morph around here. It's gonna... Yeah, I forgot that this thing doesn't mirror very well. Bugger. All right. Just doing these again, then. We can use it also to cover up that suspension that's poking through as well. Nice. Now, let's get some wheel arch covers. Put them in as place as good as possible. And for now, I think that'll do. Here, it's just got a really big wheel arch cover. Then we'll stretch it out that way so it makes it look like it's a part of the body. Now, I don't know what the regulation is on having tail lights not being visible from either side like this, but I'm gonna take a risk and say that I'm gonna do it. So far, so good. Now, like most of these, we're gonna have a very cramped seating position. So we're gonna choose some probably very buckety seats that you're gonna have to step in anyway. Hmm, okay, so making it narrower, that's realistically a sort of thing that you could do. Just go a narrower seat maybe, and then have the drive shaft just slightly rub between your legs, yeah. The no room between the drivers is very indicative of this sort of car as shown by these sorts of images where it's quite narrow and apparently rubbing elbows is very common. We should probably also just go ahead and hide the engine since we're not gonna be seeing it. And it seems that the transmission isn't gonna go invisible, which is annoying since the engine is gone, ugh, whatever. I wanted to leave the drive shaft in there, but it looks like we don't have a whole lot of, nah, nah, I'm gonna leave that, freck it. Now, steering wheel. 90s, so this is very sort of like 90s, 2000-esque. But you know what? It's probably gonna be some sort of uh, aftermarket thing. Momo's at the time was actually quite popular, so we'll maybe go with this. Then we'll mount our head unit right about there. A number plate notch about here. And no, this is not actually a fuel cap. It is a charging port. I think we're good to go send it over now. I know it's not in a good state, but what does the automation test track reckon this two-geared sports petrol-powered car will do? Two minutes and six seconds? Okay. Now, this is where we get to doing EV stuff, and you see this little description button? 
Click that and in here, you can put in exclamation mark, EV exclamation mark. And this will now export as an EV. That's all you need to do. Now, for those of you wanting to make multiple trims, here's the trick. First, you make sure that you got your normal vehicle name, then your trim name, which is kind of more like a model name. Then after that, put in like, this is gonna be the high power version. Then when exporting, just remove that. I mean, it does, as long as it's basically uniform between all of the different variations we're gonna do, this is how we do it. Then I like to have things unbreakable and make sure that zip pack mod is unticked. You can go pack this later, but this has to be unticked for this to work. Export the car. And then here I have a duplicate low power version and it is going to have a new engine. And we have a little over half the amount of torque and at a longer RPM. So this one will be more efficient over a longer band, but then drop down and we'll see how this actually compares. And just to make sure that this one is distinguishable, we're gonna put on a badge, eco. Now I know I didn't do one for the other one, but yeah, whatever. Make sure that EV is still there because I'm doing an EV version as well. Though that's not to say that you can't uh, mix and match in between. Then we're just gonna remove low power again. So unbreakable fixtures because I like that and zip pack mod unticked and export again. And now we'll see that we have two variants of our vehicle. We've got a high powered and a low powered. And if we open it up, we'll see that it has a proper EV motor from the export. Nice. Now, as I was saying, this would start like this and it would probably go to about here and then go down. But for some reason, it's arbitrarily chosen 6,000 RPM and it drops off rather quickly. I wonder what this thing is actually like. You know? It's pretty darn fast. It's very quiet, but we'll go into modding in a second. That is, oh God, okay. Why is ABS not working? Is that a thing? Does ABS not work with exported cars? ABS is showing that it's working, but it's not actually doing anything. That's very peculiar. Also, our top speed reverse seems very limited, unfortunately. And... Oh, God! I want to bring up some performance timers. What do we reckon this car can do in... It's zero to 100 test. Wow, the regenerative braking is harsh, bud. All right, three, two, one, go. And 2.35, okay, you know what? This is maybe a little bit broken, but you get the idea. Oh, look, no engine and oh, no transmission. Do we still have the little bits of things sticking out to the rear tires? No, we don't. Ah, oh, well, bad luck. This thing is just bonkers. I wonder what its top speed will be, but I'm gonna also now put this at 2.35 seconds up against the other version of our car. Its power graph is very similar. So 500 versus a thousand almost. And its RPM also seems to be about seven and a half thousand RPM. And this one's a six, okay, that's weird. I don't get it. I didn't use uh, nitromethane eventually. Turbos I found don't really seem to affect this uh, a whole lot apart from just the max torque number, but our zero to a hundred is a lot slower. Our gear ratio is probably not really set up for this, but still 4.39 seconds. That is Ferrari quick for the time. The Ferrari 360 did it in about like 4.7 to about 4.5 seconds. So does that now make this one a little bit clearer as to its actual acceleration? Look at that, feels slow off the line, sure, but actually, quite fast. In fact, I'm gonna grab a force G meter for this. So one G is gravity and backwards, straight off the bat, it does actually go pretty on good. That is 0.6 G backwards. You are getting punched into the back of your seat. And that's also from immediately at zero. Let's compare that to a fast -ish sort of vehicle from the time. So maybe something like the Sunburst, and then we're gonna go the sports version. And at zero to 100 is not gonna be amazing, but it's G-Force you're gonna see now is... Yeah, it starts lower, but goes much higher. And the acceleration is about the same. Oh, interesting. Let's actually put this up against that sunburst. This is gonna be interesting. We're probably going to have the same acceleration, but like, it'll be a little bit faster at the beginning, but then they'll probably pull away from us. What are you up to? Why aren't you staging, bro? Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. 
There we go. Good. Oh, yeah. No need to rev the engine. And away we go. Oh, no. They absolutely pounce us. Oh, but it's the higher acceleration. What? That is... I don't understand. I think there's maybe something a little bit wrong happening here. But 11 second quarter mile? Oh, my God. Let's bring out the high-powered version and put it against something maybe like the scintilla. And yes, that's right. They have the drag version. Perfect. All right. Well, this one's going to be a little bit trickier. We should... Be able to accelerate a lot faster than they do. We're all stage three, two, go. And perfect. Oh, okay. So they were a little bit bogged, but then, oh my God, they pull away so goddamn fast. And we're topping out at about 200 kilometers an hour with a quarter mile of 9.6 seconds. Oh my God. Let's just check that acceleration again. I, I just want to see me absolutely pummel off the line. Wait, what? They stalled? Okay. So you know that new stalling issue that you have with automation cars? Apparently, that's an issue. Oh my god, I almost beat them too! Oh, oh no! That was so close! And my reaction time. I actually thought I accidentally jumped the start. It was just 0.018 of a second, which is, yeah, so incredibly fast. And the brakes are all over the place. Oh, God. I wonder what the 0 to 100... Sorry, not the 0 to 100. The G-force is on this. So, accelerate 1.2G. That means that there is more G-forces acting backwards on you than vertically on you. That, <laughs> that's so crazy. So, imagine a force being drawn as a line from here in your seating position. It's like here... And then the force backwards is like even further back. So it's not a 45 degree angle of force. It's more like this on force. That's crazy. And here I thought that sports tires wouldn't be able to have the traction necessary for this. Hmm. So I also don't understand how some of the cars were accelerating faster, but yet still managing to have uh, uh, like a worse top speed. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay, now... <laughs> All right, we're actually having issues now. Um, that's what's called a prepped surface over there, where it's meant to have high attraction. They even spray basically a glue on the ground. Now, if I try to accelerate, yeah, immediately. So those slicks, you know what, actually might have helped. Oh God, this is, oh, this is hard to control. Wait, do I have volume turned down? I suppose I never noticed because the engines themselves are really quiet. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty, let's listen to it now. Mostly just tire squeal. Oh, that's a lot of tire squeal. Oh, God. Alright, let's try out. Nope. There we nope, nope. The, no, no! Oh, God damn it! I tried to hold it on the Peter of traction loss. Alright, let's just try accelerating smoothly then. Oh, God. Nope, no, that didn't work at all. Oh, this regenerative braking? Kind of jank. I don't, like, you know what? Nah, screw this. We're meant to be able to change the regenerative braking here somewhere. I just have to figure it out. All right, it seems that it's not actually here. Not a, not a thing I can do. Frick. I was hoping to be able to turn down the regenerative braking. Seems that that's only going to be able to be changed in code. Let's try accelerating now. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go, up to 100, shoot, oh my god, this thing is way too powerful, oh my god, alright, let's just try doing a drift, oh, Jesus Christ almighty, this thing is ridiculous, oh please, just go straight, nope, straight, nope, straight, straight, on oh, this regenerative braking is a tro- okay, you know what, nah, this is no good. All right, low power for me. I mean, it's still accelerating like a Ferrari and all the weight should be up the front. But let's give it a try. Okay, you know what? A lot more controllable. Oh, thank God. Yeah, all right, maybe Tesla swapping something around a, that weighs around a ton. Not the brightest idea. And it seems that our top speed is also higher. That's weird. Oh, ABS sucks still. So maybe I should go in and manually change the brake bias 
in the settings, which you can find under the Control W menu. Maybe do that in a little bit. Maybe for now, I just won't fully break whatever. Uh, I don't need to. Okay. Oh, I know what's happening now. Oh, the regenerative braking is adding to the actual braking, which means that this thing is going to lock up the rear tires. How didn't I think of this earlier? So, in automation, maybe if you're going to do this, drop the rear pro power, rear brake power down a lot. You know, there's also maybe the, uh, the, the possibility that I didn't actually tune my brakes at all, because I forgot, which happens very often. Rear brake power, like 50%, perfect. Okay, breaking into the corner. Doing okay. Oh, still a little too much. Oh dear. Then let's increase our front brakes a lot then. So hopefully that'll now be balanced. Oh god. Accelerating is still... It feels weird. It feels like it is really slow, but it really isn't. Maybe if I brought the gearing down a lot. Okay, that's a little bit better, but still not great. But manageable now. And we're going to edit this now. If you don't know how to edit things, it'll be under mods. Find your mod and open in Explorer. Easily done. This is one vehicle and this is another vehicle. Which one is which? We're going to have to figure that out. So let's just open up one of the mains. And this is the high powered one. So we want the other one. The other one being the 332. That is, I've never seen one that's just numbers like that before. Yeah. Okay, good. Low power and electric motor. Now let's see if there's regen maximum torque regen yes there we go so i'm going to turn this way way down because i want to be able to coast when i need to and just use my own brakes and then the regen torque we're going to like halve that control s come back into here and control r now when braking hopefully this will be a little bit smoother so let's go in and brake much better. ABS can now do its job. Now, I know that you probably want more regen, but I suppose that's more for like a uh, automatic sort of city driving stop go traffic sort of thing here. Not so much. Wait, is that? Hold on. I've got a cabin view. Oh, OK. So it's just got a set in drive and one RPM gauge with speed underneath. Perfect. And, you know, this is actually not so bad. Okay, I spoke too soon. I'm going to maybe go full sweat mode for this right after I do one last thing. Under here, we should have... There we go. There's our sounds. Let's get rid of that negative. So the maximum gain will be 10. This is under the electric motor, just sound config. And here's the electric motor choice, of which there is three. You can go zero, three, and four. Those are the choices. But we're just going to go with two. Save that. And control R. Oh, okay, that was weird. And... Good. Now we can hear it. Nice. So that is a helpful little thing if you want to ever be able to hear the engine. I wish that that was related a little bit to how the engines were made, kind of like the torque graphs a little bit, where is if you had a loud vehicle, then it would ah, make a loud engine and a quiet vehicle would make a quiet thing, which makes sense. The more power a vehicle makes, the more noise it makes. So I think that, that would have been a great way of doing it. So... Devs, Infinity, who's in my Discord. Uh, how about I just go ahead and make requests of you and make your job a lot harder. God damn it, stop spinning! How do I, how do I fix this? Uh, maybe if I made it an open differential? Oh, God. Oh, maybe if I soften the rear sway bar compared to the front. This is another gripe of mine. So there is no sway bar tuning by default, which makes sense perfectly fine but if i now go and put on a rear sway bar that's adjustable which is uh sway bar low power race rear sway bar it is set to like some sort of default number of which i do not understand like i get it newton meters is how much torque is being applied to twist it i don't know what it should be should it be here should it be is that a good number is that a good number i don't know so we're just going to set it to a fairly small one for now let's add some more rear toe in 17 percent will do and away we go so mid corners hopefully no no okay still the same issue feel that you know what maybe stability control would be super helpful for this damn bro oh well that's fine now zooming down here Okay, you know what? 
not terrible, but also, you know what? Not great. You know what? How about instead we take it on the new salt plains? Oh, it's, it's gonna be hard to drive, isn't it? I've not used this part of the map before, but I saw in a Muye video recently how it's usable. Oh no, this is atrocious. How is this thing still oversteering? That's insane. So let's slowly bring it up to power. I mean, I know we're not on solid ground, but this is ridiculous. There we go. Kind of just skimming along the top now. And is that it? Oh, we're already at our top speed. <laughs> Maybe I didn't need to be so excited about accelerating really fast. 199 kilometers an hour. And it's only a little bit scary. I'm going to try putting a little bit of steering on. Okay. A little bit more. Okay, yeah. Once it actually gets up to speed, it's not so bad. It's just that, you know, twice the amount of torque than a high-powered V8 has kind of thing that causes issues. So, hmm... Maybe not the greatest car still. But you know what is great? My channel members. And that specifically includes the Hellerman. Thank you all for being channel members. But for everybody else, I'll catch you all next time. Mm, goodbye.